So I'm building the world's fastest K-Truck by combining the 1996 Suzuki Carry with the all-wheel drive drivetrain of a Tesla Model 3 and giving it a rally cage and suspension. This one-off halo project is my big bet to get Mutiny on the map so we can build our affordable truck for everyone. In the last few episodes, I bought a donor card and insurance auction, tore down both vehicles, scanned them into 3D space, and cut into the K-Truck to fit the Tesla drive units, which fit oddly well. This week, we're tackling the biggest problem of the entire build, the flimsy paper-thin frame of the K-Truck. We're taking this truck from just 42 horsepower of two-wheel drive to over 550 ponies of instant all-wheel drive power, so we'll need a proper plan to get this done on time, but also make it safe. If we get this right, we'll have a super rad ripper of a tiny truck. If we get this wrong, when I step on the pedal, the truck snaps in half and becomes a 2,500-pound electric rat trap. Welcome back to the car factory. <gasps> So uh, we're gonna talk about our list here. I got all the easy stuff done. We got our donor car, we took both apart, and now we're working on that third one, not dying. So all the easy parts of this project are now over. We're moving into the hard stuff, and I have to make a decision about the most important part of the whole thing, the frame. Let me show you what's going on. Guys, help me pull this bed. There we go, lock it off this way. So the frame on a K-Truck is made of paper, which I will show you in a minute. K-Trucks don't really have frames in the way you're thinking of a truck frame, like a big thick piece of metal that's shaped into a C. K-Trucks have shaped sheet metal that's really thin. I drilled a hole there to show you, probably can't see that too well, but I drilled a hole there to show you that this is just thin paper. This is not gonna support 550 horsepower. The minute we step on that pedal, it's gonna rip off whatever it's attached to, and that's not gonna fly. What's more is that electric vehicles put their power down through the frame differently than a gas vehicle. So in a gas vehicle, you have a drive shaft running down the center of the vehicle and that's twisting one way. That's how you get these videos of cars and trucks launching in a drag strip where when they launch, the one end is pulling up and the other one is pushing down. On an electric race car, the motors are twisting forward and so they're pushing both evenly on the frame. So even though you don't have that twist, you have the challenge of instant torque that is being applied through the frame all at once. And because we're building an all-wheel drive car, we not only have the torque on the rear motor that's pushing through the frame, but we also have the front one trying to snap the entire K-Truck in half. Now I've thought about some ways to fix this and solve this whole issue. One is we could plate the whole frame so we could wrap a big plate around this and try to brace it and make it stronger. But we're basically building a new frame around the old one. I could just do big hoops in the back and C-notches to locate the power units and then put a plate on the end here. But wherever we attach this, when we step on the pedal, it's gonna snap that off. The real answer is building an entire frame for the truck out of new metal, but that would require a big chassis table and a jig, which I don't have and costs a lot of money. So I built one, check it out. We took these I-beams from the building, turned them into our own chassis table. This thing is completely dead flat. Doesn't look like it because it's on Harbor Freight, you know, dollies right now, but this is a perfectly flat surface that we can build ourselves a frame on. These I-beams were sitting in the alley from 28 years ago when they did a ton of work on this building. They changed out a bunch of the structural metal and these were just left behind. When I moved into the building, I had no idea what to do with these, but when I decided to build a chassis jig, I thought this is when we should go get them. We went into the alley to get these out. We can't really fit a forklift in there, so we had to move these by hand. However heavy you think these things are, they are 10 times heavier than that. I was at the absolute limit of my physical ability to move this thing. We moved these on the dollies and we surfed it here into the building, but they're way too long. The K-Truck project is about 10 feet long, and these were 22 feet long. So we cut these in half with an oxy torch, got them roughly lined up, and I wanted these to have the ability to change width for different kinds of projects because we're gonna build other vehicles here. So I wanted the bracing between them to be bolted in. The problem is how do you get the holes of the braces perfectly aligned with the beam? And the answer is using a mag drill to drill through both at the same time. So we tack the plates in and use the mag drill to drill through both plates to get a perfect hole through each of them that lines up perfectly. Bolted our plates on and then welded our cross members between them. So now we have a portable chassis stand that is perfectly flat and go any anywhere in the shop. This does need some leveling feet, which are coming in the mail, but right now it gives us the perfect platform in which to start to build our frame. We're gonna build a proper frame for this, no compromises, no super thin K-Truck metal. It has to be perfectly flat and square, which you can only do on a surface like this. I wanna get the cab pulled off, I wanna get the subframe stripped down, I wanna get the raw subframes onto this chassis table so we can start to line everything up. The front has to come up really high. So I would say probably Connor, just cause you're built tall. <laughs> and we gotta grab it low. We'll just see, and if anyone starts to have a hard time, we'll stop, okay? Okay. So three, two, one, up. Three guys moving a truck. Most of a truck. Okay, let's put it down, don't crush your hand. And we're golden, and my mic exploded. I hope you know this is real stuff. You're watching, you're watching a real project unfold. This is no movie magic. Working on a car with a Magnetic mic is a challenge. There's a, just a little, just a little leak ski, that's all. No big. Don't look at that, look at me. 
<laughs> I want to get the suspension. I want to get the motors. I want to get all this stuff off of here because the subframe is what matters. This is what locates the whole suspension. When you get this straight, you get this straight, but this is unwieldy as it is. This weighs a lot. It's just a lot to fight around. I don't want to fight it around that much. These points are not in plane, which means they're not on the same level. Where the subframe bolts up to the Tesla, these are made special because they can make whatever they want. We want to try to normalize this out. I don't know how these come off. Oh, that's how. Remember how in the last episode I made fun of Joaquin for using a wobble socket on wheels? ultimate rally crew service. What's your favorite car, Andy? None of them. They're all bad. This is the messy middle when you realize how deep you are into one of these projects and how you can't go back. I've never disassembled a five link before, but these are complicated. The team teaming. Continue disassembling or get forklift? We're almost there. Yeah, we're not gonna, not gonna worry about that. That's fine, these don't weigh that much. How easy that comes off, it's unbelievable. Come on, Michigan cars don't do that. I think it's in the long drawer. Now pry bar. It's tool organization time, don't look at that. Don't look at the roof leak. Don't look, don't look at that. This way, this way. Try not to destroy this little Christmas tree clip, but I think it has it coming. Yeah, they're awful. Cause they don't ever care about serviceability. They just care about getting your money. They just want your money. Elon wants your bucks. I noticed some people don't like this project cause they think I'm supporting Tesla. This vehicle is so deeply removed from the Tesla ecosystem. This was a $7,000 salvage car. None of this money made it back. Don't lose sleep over it. The funny thing about a quick job is you're like, I'll just bust this out. I don't need to grab the good tools. I'll just do the fast tools. And the fast tools always take dramatically longer than the good tools. This is a wheel speed sensor that I'm removing right now. It counts how many times the brake disc goes around. We actually probably do need this because we're gonna have super high frequency traction control. The way you get EV vehicles to go extremely fast is you manage the traction control on the millisecond level. For that, you need that. So I will not destroy it today. I have to remove the axle now. The CV axle is locked into the motor and into the knuckle. I don't want to unbolt it at the knuckle, wheel bearing stuff, so I want to remove it here so I get them out whole, but it's been in there six years and 140,000 miles. This is how you get Andy to hire people, is uh, you make it suck, so he goes, I have to have a mechanic now. Otherwise, he's the mechanic. He doesn't want to be. The wrong tool for every job. Perfect. There we go. That's thing number two. Hurts right around the lower back area. I don't think you're supposed to lift with your back. I did it. Now I'm stuck this way. <laughs> What's your exercise? The, the John Wayne? I was gonna say we should try picking this up on our own, but it doesn't look super fun. Yeah, it's not bad, put it down. So then what's the front of the truck gonna be and what's the back of the truck gonna be? Well, considering the front's over here, I think that's the front. So let's swing this around. Can you guys slide the truck out of the way? <laughs> Which is a funny thing to say. Hey, can you guys move the truck out of the way? And it's two of them. You just move the rear over. Just drag it on the ground, yeah. There you go. Perfect. Maybe there is some of these small trucks, you know? Connor's gonna pull the jack out, and then we're gonna turn it around and put it on that. And we just have to put it on it. We don't have to get it perfect. The, this is the length of the K-truck. We pulled this beam out of the back, and we cut it in half, and it is the length of the K-truck to the inch. It's cosmic, right? There's something going on there. Uh, so it's gonna be roughly near the back, but we also don't wanna like tip this thing up. So yeah, we'll put it near the back somewhere. Everything's gonna hit. 
it's going to hit everything. Three, two, one, lift. In what other universe can you pick up 330 horsepower like this? All right. Rear motor's in. This also is about the width of underneath the K-Truck. This was about between the tires. And it shows you where our suspension pickup points are gonna be. This right now is tilted back. It needs to be like that, roughly. So that's what we're gonna make a jig for. Already I'm happy that we made a flat chassis plate because I can immediately see how far off that subframe is from totally flat. It gives me that idea of what that datum line looks like. I know we have a floor, but working on stuff on the floor just doesn't quite work right. This I can immediately see I have to bring those rear points up and flatten those out. The front motor is smaller, but it does have stuff on it. Can we do it the same fun cool guy way? Probably not. <laughs> it's fine. It's just wasn't, wasn't planning on that motion. In two minutes, we went from pain to numb to warm now. <laughs> it's like, it's, let's see, is it? Oh yeah, that's gonna be a thing. I'm fine. I got 10 of them. I knew better. I shouldn't have put my hand in there. I knew better. I think the three of us can lift this. We already did the last one. Thankfully, these are super floppy and don't help at all. Cause they're, you know, yeah, it doesn't help at all. Let's try it. Let's just put your hand on the, put your hand on this one and put your hand on the control arm. And let's just try it. Let's see if it sucks, we can strip it down. Three, two, one, up. Oh, nope, that sucks. Thanks, dudes. You know, this is, this is easier. This is easier. Did that just go on so precisely? Yeah. Forklift hero. Uh, I was gonna say that was a lot of pain and suffering to see these lined up, but it looks good. Let's see if I can get those to slide a little. You think I learned my lesson? <gasps> yeah, pretty good. It also shows you like how things are square and relative to each other and you can run a string line. This is the right way. We should have did this from the start. Glad I didn't get too far into hacking up the K-Truck. Sawzall's where it's at. The next step is gonna take some major engineering. We need to design a frame that will take both these subframes and also the cab and bed of the K-Truck and put them together and make a rally car. Thanks for stopping by the Car Factory. I will see you next week.